Hello, Internet, so nice to see you. Today we do some augmented chord madness. But first of all, listen to this. Now in this piece I put lots of augmented chords. Some are even completely unresolved following the normal rules of harmony. The augmented chord were marked with a red sign on top of the bar, so if you go back you can identify them. Why I'm having you listen to this? Because I want to show off? No, it's because in the previous video I made an augmented chord, some people wrote that they did not like augmented chords because they were too dissonant. Well, it depends what you want to express. Okay? If this piece did not disturb you, if it wasn't too dissonant for you, if it made sense in context, it means that it's not that you don't like augmented chords, it's that you want to hear them in specific context. Now, when I'm gonna play the examples on the guitar, the dissonance of the augmented chord is laid bare because there is no rhythm, no timbral change, no complex harmony, it's just a few notes on the guitar, so it's a very stark dissonance and this can turn you off. Just know that when you put them in context, they actually sound good. Now that we've done this, let's unleash the madness! So let's take a C augmented chord. The notes are C, E, G sharp. Now if I move a note of an augmented chord down a half step, I get a major chord. So for instance, if I move the G sharp down to G, I get a C major chord, C, E, G. But if I move the C note down a half step, I get an E major chord, E, G sharp, B. And if I move the E note down a half step, I get a G sharp major chord, G sharp, B sharp, D sharp. Since the augmented chords are symmetric, I need to play a little bit fast and loose with the enharmonics. If you are a nitpicker, I am sorry for you, I'm just going not to care about enharmonic notation on this video. If you understand enharmonic notation, you know what I mean. Now, if I take the very same augmented chord and instead I raise one note by a half step, I get a minor chord. So if I take the C and raise it to C sharp, I get a C sharp minor chord, C sharp, E, G sharp. If I take the E note and I raise it a half step, I get an F minor chord. And if I take the G sharp note and there is the half step, I get an A minor chord. This already gives us a lot of possibilities for this, because you see, for instance, I can play a C major chord, then a C augmented chord, and then an A minor chord, and I have a chromatic connection between them. <laughs> very smooth, but I can also change my direction and go C major, C augmented, F minor. Now if I wanted to go back to C major, I can consider this F minor like the minor fourth in the key of C, follow it with a G7 and go back to C. So any two chords in this diagram can be connected by passing through the C augmented chord and every time I'm just moving just one note by just a half step. So if you are careful about our voice leading, this transition can be made quite smooth. But I promised you madness, so let's go ahead and see what else we can do. Well, we've seen in our previous video, and link on the top right if you want to see it, that the augmented chord can resolve to minor or major chord, like a fifth chord to a first chord in a key. For instance, this C augmented chord can resolve to F and F minor. We already have F minor in this diagram, so I just need to put an F. 
can also resolve to D flat and D flat minor, and can also resolve to A and A minor. So I gain three major chords, F, A, and D flat. So for instance, I could play the C chord, follow it with a C augmented, and then resolve this C augmented over a D flat major chord. This D flat major in the key of C will be interpreted by your ear as a Neapolitan chord. I made a video about that, so another link on the top right. Then I can just follow it again with a G7 and a C. I get this. Several other connections are possible here, so I can start from any of those chords, pass through the C augmented chord and go to any other of those chords, again, if I'm careful with my voice leading, the transition between any of those two chords sound quite smooth. But it doesn't end here. Now, this is where I need your full, complete, undivided attention, otherwise you get lost in this video. The C augmented chord can resolve to A major, D flat major, or F major. Now, if I take this C chord here, there is another augmented chord that resolves here. This augmented chord that resolves to C is the G augmented chord. Again, this feels like a 5 to 1. This G augmented chord can resolve also to the E major chord and the G sharp major chord, and also if we raise or lower any of its notes by a half step, we can get other six chords, three major and three minor, and those chords are E flat and C minor, G and E minor, B and G sharp minor. So now I can start from any of the chords in this new diagram, pass through C augmented and go into any of the chords of this other diagram. And I can keep going though, because for instance I can write an F augmented chord here, and this F augmented chord is only one note away from this F chord here, and this F augmented is also one note away from the chords of D minor, A, F sharp minor, D flat, B flat minor, and this F augmented also resolves to the chords of F sharp major, D major, and B flat major. So I connected another diagram, and I can keep going on. It's madness, I tell you. So here's a few examples. We need to be careful about our voice leading, and also, since I'm playing all those examples with just the sound of the guitar, without a rhythm, without a musical context, beyond just a sequence of chord, then those examples may sound a bit strange the first time, but they definitely can work in the right context. So I can do this. I'm starting from C. Go into the C augmented. Resolve into F. Go into F augmented, and then from there, I go to B flat. You can use these to move from the key of C to the key of B flat, or just to move from the C chord to the B flat chord and then maybe come back to the C major key. It's just a connection between chord, it can be used to modulate, it can be used to change key, but it can work perfectly well without thinking of keys or modulation, just to connect those chord. Another example along the same line, I'm starting from C, C augmented, F, F augmented, D. <laughs> I can go C, C augmented, F, F augmented, F sharp. Or I can go C, C augmented, F, F augmented into A. Those are all chord progression and modulation that you could find either in late romantic music or in film music scores, rather than if you want a pop or a blues song. 
As you can see, this pattern extends and we can go very far moving through augmented chords going from here or from there. There are a lot of chords in this diagram and the pattern is also larger than that because I can expand it in other points. Now I could stay here and play a lot more examples out of this pattern. We could really stay here hours and play all the possible combination and path through all of these. But if you are like me, you are just itching to get your hands on your guitar and try all these on your own and see what you can come up with it. And I completely approve of that. Everything we do here should be done practically by you. Otherwise, what's the point of knowing music theory if you cannot make some music on your own? Am I right? Now, only one recommendation before you go. Make sure you pay attention to your voice leading, because if you do not lead your voices correctly from one chord to another, they will sound very disconnected. So make sure you lead your voices correctly. If you have no idea how to do that, I do recommend you guys have a look at the Complete Chord Mastery course, which is a complete video course, not a book, made by guitar players for guitar players, when we study all those things like voice leading, how to play your, your chords all around the guitar, how to connect them and make them sound better, by connecting all the notes inside them. I'll be honest with you, this is a hands-on course. If you're just planning of watching some videos and reading some PDF, then don't take this course because the real value of this course is in the exercises. I'm explaining you not only how to do things, but we actually do those things. So if you are willing to really learn your instrument and do some exercise that make music theory practical and usable by a working musician, whether you're a professional or an amateur, no problem. But if you want to make those things practical so that they work on your guitar, then yes, take complete chord mastery. If you're just looking at uh, being entertained by a lot of music theory, don't take complete chord mastery, it's not the course for you. I'm just trying to make sure that you take this course only if it's the right thing for you. You can check out Complete Chord Mastery on the link on the top right. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to click on subscribe and on notification because if you don't click on notification, YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make new videos based on what you write in there. This is Tommaso Zillia of MusicDeriforGuitar.com and until next time, enjoy it!